So welcome everybody, I'm so excited to be here and like Chris mentioned, I am in the love business and I'm a boutique matchmaker and dating coach. So a lot of, uh, a lot of people always ask me, how did I get into this uh, line of business? And at an early age I was always um, very intrigued with relationships and dating and uh, having a sociology and anthropology background, I originally started uh, to do counseling and then I thought, you know what, I really love dating and relationships, so I was really inspired by the movie Hitch. You all know Hitch with Will Smith. Yes. So I wanted to be the female Hitch. I wanted to teach men how they could really come out of their shell and be amazing on dates. And I've, I've actually taught that with women as well. So that's a little bit of back, uh, background about myself. So enough about me, I want to get into um, basically, uh, the number one question what you need to ask yourself before you outsource a matchmaker, go online or use a dating app. Okay, this is important. Are you 100% date ready? What does 100% date ready mean? So, are you over your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend? Have you taken a dating detox? And what I mean by that is have you went away? Have you really taken the time to get over someone? Uh, next is, um, are you willing to incorporate someone into your home environment? As singles, we're so comfortable in our own space that sometimes we may not feel ready to bring someone into our home, so you need to ask yourself that. Also, um, are you establishing healthy relationships with your friends and family? Um, and are you at your ideal, you know, ideal image, are, are you comfortable with your body weight, or are there things that you need to work on? So now it's all about your game plan. How are you going to attract that perfect match into your life, right? This is exciting, right? Because now you're 100% date ready, so how are you going to find your match, okay? So these are a little, a little bit of tips that I would recommend using. First of all, you have to create your personal brand. So as a single, what makes you stand out next to all of the other singles? You know, what makes you great? I want you to sit down at home tonight and develop a list of five attributes, inner and outer, and really assess yourself and what makes you great. If you're in that mindset as well, it will help you to create your online profile. If you need help with this, you can ask a friend. You know, how would you describe me? You know, all these things come into play when you're creating your online profile. Also with online profiles, you really want to make sure that you have like a sexy photo. Um, you don't need a LinkedIn shot where you're in like a full piece suit. We want it to be fun and engaging. Men fall in love with their eyes. Women fall in love with what we hear. So if men are viewing your profile, you better have a damn good picture <laughs> or else it's not going to work. So I always recommend that you really invest in a photographer or you know, get your hair and makeup done because that's really important with online dating. Uh, so after you create your personal brand, now you're gonna create your, your best look. So maybe you need to do a cleanse. Maybe you need to do a wardrobe cleanse and get rid of your like old clothes that you haven't worn for the past six months. Or maybe source out like a, a, an image consultant that's really gonna help you dress in what's suitable to your assets. So you have nice legs or you know, a nice chest. Don't cover yourself up. You know, there's shapewear, there's a whole, like a lot of things that you can use. And I think you need to really, no matter what size you are, you really need to pr project your sensuality so that other people will feel like you're that magnet, okay? So just be beautiful in your own skin. So now I want you to market yourself. So when you're out there as a single, you need to tell people that, you're, that you, when they ask you your status, you say, yes, I am single, and I love my life, and I'm ready for that great partner. Okay, not, oh my god, this city sucks. Like, these guys, like, they don't even ask me out. I freaking hate this city, okay? Like, we don't need to be negative, okay? So if you're projecting a positive image out there, and you're ready, then who knows if that guy is going to have a cousin or a brother or a sister that are going to match you up with somebody. So it's all about inner circle recruitment. And um, another thing is to really get out there. So rather than going straight home after work, why not check out a hotel lobby bar or an upscale restaurant? Go for cocktail hour. You know, if you're worried about going out on your own, you can 
outsource a wing woman, which is another service I offer. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you have these resources out there, so why not use them? Uh, another thing I, I'd like to mention is to shake up your routine. So a lot of times after work, we go from point A to point B, we're taking the same route home. Why not take a different route? How about Uberpool? Hello, the new dating app. Sounds good to me. You never know who you're going to find in an Uber car, okay? So these are, this is what I mean about switching it up and like really putting yourself out there. So with Uberpool, you could be in a car with, you know, who has a brother who's single and like 45 and awesome. There you go, you got a date next week. So really market yourself and uh, don't be afraid to, to switch it up. You know, going to the gym at a different time, shopping at a different grocery store. We always stay in our same bubble. Like, I live on King West, and I hang out with lots of single women, and we always go to the same spots. And then they say, you know what, I can't seem to meet anybody. It's just the same people all the time. Well, that's because we're not getting out of our bubble. What you need to do is research different neighborhoods, different events, attend networking events, and don't be afraid to, like, get out of your shell. Okay, so that's, that's, that's really important to get out there. Um, next, I want you to ditch your must-have lists. We all have these little lists that we carry around. Oh, he has to be 6'4", dark-haired, gorgeous, handsome. I like little petite, you know, very exotic brunettes. Oh, really? How long have you been single? Four years. Okay, well, maybe we need to put that list in the garbage because it ain't, it ain't working for you, okay? So what I mean about this list is it's good to have you know, certain qualities we're looking for, but I don't want this list to deter you from meeting a guy that's 5'11 versus 6'2", because we never know who we're gonna fall in love with, right? You never know, and it's the most opposite person on, that, on your list that you do fall in love with, right? We all know this. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna close it up to one last point, okay? So, Rather than looking for the one, just be the one, okay? If you are the one, you're going to be that magnet, and you're going to attract what the people that are meant to love you, okay? And that I'm going to leave it at that. If you want me to work with you, you can find me online, shaneinthecity.com, and I, I work with lots of singles, dating coaching, wing woman. I'm a certified life skills coach and a matchmaker. And I'm also giving away three free complimentary dating coaching sessions this evening for the first three people that come to me. Okay? I love you guys, and I wish you all the best. And remember, love, love. and then you need to make a plan. We don't need to talk, talk to you for hours about how our day's going, what's going on. You need to say, hi, are you free on Friday or Saturday? Uh, I, I would love to see you. And then the woman responds, yes, I am. And boom, you have a date. Save the talk and the back and forth for the date. Otherwise, we may tap out, right? You get, you get frustrated when it's like so much dialogue back and forth. So I always tell men, it's nice to, you know, do the small talk, but then really make a plan and get to the point and set up the date. I have a question here. <laughs> Go ahead. Just can't find this. not worth your time. Yeah, so I know but it's just a lot of time. So. Okay, and so I, I go out of the pool, Yeah. <laughs> so I, are you the one coming up with the date idea or is he? Are you the one pushing the date or is he? Can you answer that? I don't know. Like is he the one initiating initiating yeah, no, the date? Yeah, the and he's like, hi, like yeah, let's go out on yeah. 
does he do like a fall, like a, like a, you know, the, the day prior to the date, does he ask you if it's confirmed? Uh, no. Okay. So maybe, okay, first of all, I would say always have a backup plan. Yeah. If you don't know if a date's confirmed, screw him and make sure you have a plan with your girls. Yeah. You know, do not be sitting at home in your pajamas eating, eating ice cream <laughs> and watching Dirty Dancing, okay? So <laughs> make sure that you always have a backup plan. And what you could do, if he isn't communicating, you could call him or text him and say, hey, are we still on for tomorrow night? If you haven't heard from him, screw him, and then you just go out with your friends and you're not disappointed. You just know it wasn't right. Good. Next question. Okay, wing woman. What does a wing woman do? So as your personal wing woman, so a lot of times I do this with males. It basically helps, you know, new divorce, uh, divorcees may not have a singles network of friends to go out with. So I'm right downtown and I take you out to whatever location you prefer. If you're unfamiliar with like kind of hot spots downtown, then I'll facilitate where we're going to go. And I'll meet with you ahead of time and uh, assess like where you need help with. So say it's the, the first approach is really awkward or you don't know the what to say to a guy or a woman. Most of the time men really get nervous with you know, the conversation, that initial approach. Um, your, I assess your body language. You know, your tone, your facial expressions. Are you being open when you're out, right? Because a lot of single women, we go out and people think we're married. Why is that? Because we're, we're like this. You know, if, when you're single, you need to walk into a room and own it. You need to be like... <laughs> Whoever wants to talk to you, I mean, you just have to own that and put it out there, right? So, as a, my wing woman service, what I do is I, uh, I'm also trying to establish like a group wing night service so that I can work with like four women at once, so it's not so nervous one on one. But yeah, it's a really great tool, and um, afterwards we provide feedback and I discuss maybe where you could use work and vice versa. Yeah. Okay, she just basically sit there. No, no, we, we go out together, and I make, I'm make i kind of the, um, the icebreaker, right? So if you see a guy, you're like, oh my god, that guy in the corner there? I'm like, I'm going to eye him up, I'm going to bring him over to you, leave you guys together, and I'm going to go to the washroom. All of a sudden, i got to go pee, okay? So I'm going to leave you there, and you're going to work some magic. And if I come back and it's still awkward, then I'm going to be like trying to facilitate. But we're buddies when we go out. Nobody knows what I do, right? It's undercover. So, yes, so that raises the value, right? If I walk in with a guy that's average, they're going to be like, what? I'm not, okay, I'm not, I'm an average girl. But if I'm with a guy that's like kind of average, it raises his social value. Eyes are on us. What is he doing with her? Not that I'm whatever, but, you know, obviously he must be kind of decent and cool if he's hanging out with like a cool chick like me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so really I'm just helping you meet people. And I, all the wing woman sessions I've done, I've actually gotten like card, like my clients or whoever I've been with have, have actually gotten numbers and cards. And they're like, I had such a good experience. And from that, they became more confident in the dating scene, more socialized, more out of their shell. Like they were dressing differently and more confident. So I really want to blow that wing woman service in Toronto up because I, I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. It's really popular in New York. There's the wingman in New York, but I really want to bring it bring it to Toronto. So, you know, spread the word.